Jones, couple of picks. Passer rating wasn't great. But, you know, when you pay a quarterback $60 million, you occasionally need them to be Superman, put on a cape and be a superhero. And Dak, he is a superhero, but it feels he's like the Green Lantern where he's officially a superhero. We're not quite sure what he does. In fact, the Green Lantern has a ring. Dak doesn't. I I know. I don't know what to say. I mean, he was two for five in the red zone with two turnovers before the 15-play drive. I don't know what to say. It was a win. So his superpower is his EQ. And what I mean by that is Kirk Cousins, who I've, I've said Dak is a better athlete than Kirk Cousins. Kirk's a better thrower. But they're the same guy. You can tune into any Dak game in the third quarter, and you can watch him. And you have no idea if he's playing well or not. If Aaron throws a pick, he pouts. He's yelling at his offensive coordinator. He's ghosting guys. He goes on a personal darkness retreat. In a game, he gets sullen and dark. Dak and Kirk Cousins. Kirk Thursday, Dak Sunday night. You can't tell. It's a, it's a vanity-driven franchise with ego everywhere, expectations through the roof. He's got CeeDee Lamb barking at him, and like Dak doesn't care. Unflappable, stoic, grown-up, adult, high IQ, high EQ, and that matters a lot. Now, a lot of the great all-time quarterbacks sometimes were barkers and they're very emotional. You can do that, but uh, in this franchise, I could argue he is the perfect personality for what Dallas is, a noisy, vanity-driven franchise, and Dak doesn't appear to have much of an ego. He's confident without being cocky. And again, he was not good in the red zone, on the road. C.D. Lamb started banging on, on Dak on the sidelines. And did, did Dak get into a whizzing match with him? No. He ignored him. Actually, literally ignored him in the second half and used all the B and C guys and engineer to win on the road. So it's a road win. You didn't have Micah. You didn't play particularly well in the red zone situational football. So for Dak, it's kind of what Dak does. And here he was after. The ups, the downs, the ebbs and flows, a lot of things that Mike preaches on, um, two minutes. Um, and for us to just stay resilient, win the game in two minutes. It was one of those games, I don't care how long you play, you'll never forget it. And so I just kept saying, let's make it, make it one to remember. And um, I think we did that. Now, <laughs> you desperately needed to win last night because the Cowboys schedule it. This is the tough part of it. It's not early and late their schedule. Now look at this puppy Detroit at San Francisco at Atlanta rival Philly Houston at suddenly great Washington Joe Burrow is right after the Giants and the Giants offensive line is we, we we talked about this about three weeks ago. If you're paying attention to the Giants, their own line, and they've drafted it and, and put money into it, it's good. I don't know where it ranks this morning on PFF, but that Giants O-line totally dominated Seattle. And the Dallas's D-line, again, Pittsburgh doesn't know what they're doing offensively. They're lost. The Giants is not an easy out. Really good coach, excellent D-line, Excellent O-line. Giants won a game in the Pacific Northwest 3,000 miles away without Malik Neighbors or Singletary. Like that's it. So it was like Daniel Jones was doing his thing. And J-Mac doesn't like him. And I, I'll just say this. In New York, they want to run the coach out of town. In the other New York, the Giants, you should give them an extension. They are getting everything out of Daniel Jones. He no longer, this is what Kevin O'Connell's done with Darnold. He's coached the reckless out of him. So you get big athletic Darnold making plays. Daniel Jones doesn't throw picks anymore. He's not fumbling the ball anymore. He was a turnover machine. He was Justin Fields. They've coached that all out of him. And they don't even have, I mean, obviously next year, they got to upgrade the running back room. They dominated Seattle. This was not, I don't care what the score was. Seattle was never on the field. They completely called uh, that game. I don't care what it was, 10-10. Seattle's offense was three and out, quick, quick, quick. Giants went on long drives. That Giants team, the one that nobody's talking about in New York, the one that has the trophies, is actually going to be a really tough out. I don't love Daniel Jones, but what you're seeing with the Giants, that is coaching.
If we're going to love Kevin O'Connell, because Darnold's got more natural ability than Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones, to me, I'm sitting there watching him yesterday, and I'm like, it's a little Alex Smith. The ceiling's a little lower, but he's big. He moves. He's not making mistakes. He's clearly coachable. This guy was a fumble disaster. He's not. So not all coaches, you can look at just wins. Dayball is coaching the you-know-what out of this team. They are competitive, and that O-line just ate the Seahawks alive in a really tough environment to play. I, and I, I know you won't want to hear it, J-Mac, but that Giants team is going to be a spoiler. That division's been turned upside down. It's the Giants' O-line and D-line, and it's Washington's entire operation right now. Whew. Obviously, I'm the idiot who loved Seattle. Uh, you might so have been did with I. Me. I well, love we got we got sucked into the Malik Neighbors thing, but uh, we did give out the whole face to Detroit Lions. The next week, teams feel beat up and they get smashed. We we gave that out. The other one that I missed, Colin, and I'm really ticked that I missed this. This is Seattle's early season schedule at home against Denver. Fly across the country to New England. Fly back home. Play Miami. Fly back to the Midwest. Play Detroit. Fly back home. Play the. Jo- they were. They looked exhausted. First quarter, they got just run over. I think they had like two yards in the first quarter. The Giants had like 200, some insane number. But it was just a bad spot for Seattle. I don't read too much into it, and mm. I'm sorry to report the New York Giants still stink at football. They are not good. I mean, <laughs> let's just please just stop, <laughs> dude. There are few teams in the NFL that have a better O-line, D-line combination than the Giants. They're top five in that. Most of these teams that have good D-lines have bad O-lines. Their O-line, D-line combo, and they're calling by coaches. I don't know who's injured, who's healthy. I think in our business, it's too many hosts are overwrought, ripping play calling. There's a lot more that goes into a game than just a single play. But it was tied at 20. You're deep in your own territory. Your quarterback just got his head banged into, and he's not playing well. Your run game's kind of effective. Houston has three timeouts. Force Houston to use them because there's not much time left. And yet Buffalo only burned 16 seconds because they passed it three straight times. I'm, I'm, that is unforgivable. And that's on the heels a couple of weeks ago from that zany, weird trick play against the Ravens that just muted all your momentum i don't think you'd have won that game anyway but it was a weird call that mcdermott had to address so um it just doesn't make sense like th- there are certain things in football when there's you know 35 seconds in a game it's 2020 you're on the road you are kind of effectively running the ball your quarterback just got hurt and he's having his worst game as a pro and you didn't even have your best slot receiver available so it, it was just a terrible day for josh allen and you're going to ask him deep in the territory on the road to fling it up the field three times. Therefore, Houston gets it back, doesn't have to move it much, gets a field goal and wins the game. Coaching lost that game. And again, we Buffalo is way too noisy when it comes to coaching, game management, and coordinators. The Dorsey blow up, the goofy trick play. It, it's just, it's way too noisy. The, it, and again, Josh got hurt, didn't have a slot receiver. You just run the ball. Texans take three timeouts. Maybe you lose the game in overtime. I get it. You can't lose like that. There are losses that you're like, hey, chalk it up to a bad call, chalk it up to a bad day, the weather. That is totally on the head coach. Here's Sean McDermott after. You know, that's on me, the, the, uh, the, end, the, the end of game situation on offense. They won three timeouts. I got a good field goal kicker. Uh, we needed to run the clock and uh, and move the chains, and uh, and that's on me. We didn't do that there, and, and that's my fault. I love Josh with the ball in his hands. You know, I do. And um, you know, again, efficient offense was the, was the right approach there. And- Listen, Andy Reid in crisis feels like a life preserver for the Chiefs. Sean McDermott in crisis is starting to feel like a, a kettleball for the Bills. He is pulling them down. And those losses the last couple of weeks are to teams that you'll probably have an opportunity to play in the postseason, and you're giving home field up. And Buffalo is one of the great home field advantages due to weather and their crowd noise in the league. So you're just giving up home field advantage. Nobody wants to go to Buffalo in January. Nobody wants to go to Buffalo. 
I mean, forget Josh Allen. It, 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 if you're a good team and you're a better roster, 